What the heck is up, you guys? It's your boy Ace, aka Animated Heroes, here back with another discussion video for you guys. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're actually going to be talking about the SH Figuarts One Piece line. Now, as you all know, I've reviewed every single one of the figures that has released, and for the most part, I've enjoyed them, but I'm sad to say that so many of these releases with the exception of maybe one or two at the most, have been extremely lackluster, man. And I know how you guys feel about the live action versions. We're not going to be discussing them today. We're going to be talking strictly about the anime versions, most of the figures coming from the Wano arc. In fact, I think every single one of them does. But yeah, this is a line that I hate to say it. It's far from great, but they're not horrible and I, I'm probably going to put that in the title somehow some way but um I wish this was a video that would make it to Tamashi but I highly doubt that's going to happen so basically what this is is a video just for you guys if you're someone who's planning on getting into the One Piece line or if you're in the line but you don't have all the figures you want to know whether you should get this one you want to know whether you should get that one we're going to cover all of that in today's video I'm going to go over all of my personal nitpicks with this line and how I feel like each individual figure could have been better. So, if you guys are interested in this type of content, don't forget to go ahead and drop a like for your boy, as I would greatly appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, or you're new here, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, what I'm going to try to do this video is basically go from the figure that is the most problematic to the figure that is the least problematic. And so, obviously, coming in very last place had to be none other than the SH Figure Arts Roanoa Zoro. This is a figure that I feel like many people in the action figure community had high expectations for, mostly because it's the first time we're going to get a solid, well, we, we thought, a solid 112 scale Zoro action figure. And when this release showcased, even in Tamashi Nation's promotional video, people had their doubts. But me, I tried to remain optimistic, but after I got it in hand, I realized all the problems I thought that we were going to have with this figure were 100% real. Again, the figure looks amazing, but when it comes to everything else, engineering, absolutely horrible, man. The body looks great aesthetically, but sadly, when it comes to the articulation, the shoulders are terrible. I don't know why they designed them the way that they did. When you try to pose them with the arm out, sometimes they just fall off. And then, of course, at the legs, this hard plastic that they use for the skirt is absolutely ridiculous. And why they made this choice, I have no idea, considering the fact that they've done this right several times with other action figure lines. So how Tamashi Nations, when you're making a fan favorite character from one of the biggest anime of all time you fumble the bag and one other issue i have with this guy this is just a personal one it's probably something that they're going to fix a little bit later on down the line it'll probably come as dlc like luffy i hate the fact that he did not come with a neutral bandana head sculpt they're doing it with the live action version but sadly that uh bandana without the um sword in the mouth is going to come with the sh figure arts nami and they had to do that they knew that figure wasn't going to sell so it was a really good marketing scheme but hopefully they double back and they do something like that for this zoro in particular but as of right now in my opinion this stands as the worst figure in the one piece line so far now, up next, sadly, is none other than the main character himself, Monkey D. Luffy. This is yet another figure that I really had high expectations for. And honestly, when it comes to looking at this guy, just like Zoro, he is a beautiful figure. And for the most part, I'm even okay with the way that they engineered a lot of this guy. But sadly, that doesn't help with the problems now he comes with a limited amount of accessories but since this is a dlc figure i'll give it a pass for that because of the fact that he's only 35 bucks so i'm not going to harp on accessories even though we should have gotten a gum gum something whether it be the whip the uh pistol 
any and everything could have been added and still even though dlc is being added to this guy we haven't gotten any effect pieces for his devil fruit ability but that's another story the figure itself is fine in every aspect except for two things the articulation works well enough but sadly once this guy gets broken in he just falls apart I found myself posing this guy around quite a bit because I like the figure, but there's an issue with one of the legs on mine. It constantly falls off. The torso begins to flop around. The neck is extremely floppy. This guy just, it suffers from very, very loose joints. And that's probably my biggest issue. I can handle the falling apart. I'd be okay with it if they at least didn't get loose joints but the joints on this guy are just terrible and that's honestly the only issue i have with it i do also wish that they would have thrown in the cape that he wore or the jacket that he wore over his shoulder the black one if you guys haven't seen the one arc i'll throw a picture up somewhere but um other than that it's an okay figure this is one i still do recommend because it's monkey d luffy but it does need some improvements now, next up is one that I really wish I didn't have to add to the list, but sadly, just like everything else, he has problems, so they have to be discussed. It is none other than the SH Figuarts Trafalgar Law, which is, to be honest, still a very fun action figure, but again, he does have problems, most of them coming out of the design choices. Now, the positives about this figure are that it looks outstanding and for the most part everything functions the way that it's supposed to there's no floppy joints no parts falling off and i even feel like he comes with a decent amount of accessories but again when it comes to design choices sometimes those are key when it comes to making a good figure now the number one issue i have with this guy outside of the the cape which i'll get to in just a second is the articulation at the torso. They sculpted all of the articulation, articulation, I don't know what I just said, the articulation at the back of the figure. So it's all there for him to be able to be posable, but sadly, you can't move this guy at the torso at all because of the fact that the shirt is one solid Piece. And again, I say this over and over, they could have easily split it up into three different pieces. It could have been an upper piece, a lower piece, and then a floaty piece for the bottom of the shirt. And we would have been able to get full mobility out of this guy. He's already at the price point that they could have sculpted the extra details in there. If not, once more, why not have just made the figure five, ten dollars cheaper and just kept the articulation sculpts out of it? That would have made it so much better, or at least it would have helped us save money. But for whatever reason, I don't know, man. Tomashi Nation just made some weird choices when it came to sculpting this figure. Now, my biggest issue with this guy is I always say the, the cape. It's not a cape. It's a jacket. They sculpted this jacket in three different pieces, and for whatever reason, they showed that it could be posable in even some of the promo images like this one right here. You see it floating out on the box, but it doesn't articulate at all. It's a hard plastic with no hinge or anything to lift it up. And then you can't even take it off of him. You have to pretty much carve the plastic out of him in order to take this coat off, which makes him extremely back heavy all the time because of the fact that he's a very slim figure so if they were going to attach this and make it permanent why not have given us either soft goods or something that is a much lighter plastic i i just don't understand like why they did it it could have been something that pegged on like they did with kaido and we would have been fine but for whatever reason it pegs into him so you pretty much have to tear the figure up if you want to take the coat off and then you can't put it back on properly essentially what you have to do is just sit it over his shoulders which is fine but still it's just horrible in terms of engineering so tamashi nations decisions like this shouldn't even be considered when you guys are discussing how to make these figures this was just a horrible decision at every turn 
Now, up next is the figure that many would say is probably the best release in the line. And while I disagree, I can see why many people would say that. Because when it comes to being a problematic figure, this one is probably the one you have to worry the least about. But again, sometimes it just boils down to design choices engineering and effectiveness for me which is exactly why this figure is next on the list it is a very good looking figure and honestly it's definitely one of the best and that's not saying much because all of these look great but when it comes to this sanji figure i've got some nitpicks that i think a lot of people overlooked and the number one being the shoulders. I do not like the shoulders on this guy at all. If you watched my review, I'll mention that the designs were just terrible. And a lot of people were saying, well, it's a suited body, so they had to do something a little bit different. The shoulders are absolutely horrendous. And they have fixed issues like this on figures prior to this release. The SH Figure Arts Lloyd Forger, he was wearing a suit. And that figure articulates just fine. And he's not the only one. I'm sure there are other figures that just aren't coming to mind right now. But that design choice is terrible. And it really does limit the articulation, whether you believe me or not. You can still move the arms around fine. But for a $70 figure, it should be better. I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. It should be better. And then on top of that, when it comes to the torso, the torso is not the best when it comes to the articulation either. I do feel like this guy should be able to crunch forward a bit more. Sanji is a very agile character, and so we should be able to get that in our figures. Now, it is a soft plastic, but I do think that they should have, um, I don't know, sanded it down just a little bit to give more room for more articulation. Had they fixed those two things with this guy then yes, in my opinion, this probably would have been a perfect figure. But I hate to say it, he still comes behind these next two on the list for me. Next up is a figure that I feel like does not get the respect that it deserves, mostly because a lot of people didn't want to spend the money on this one that it went for. I feel like this is a figure that, despite the big issue that it has, many people would probably still enjoy it if they were able to get their hands on it, and it is none other than Yamato, the son or daughter, whatever you want to call it, of Kaido. I absolutely love this figure, but I absolutely hate the design choice for the sash. That is literally the worst thing about this figure, and the only... <laughs> And the only problem that I have with it, other than the fact that sometimes it won't stand up because of the design of the sandals, but I mean, that's anime accurate, so I can't complain about that. But yeah, the sash piece is terrible. I truly wish that they had gone with a soft plastic for that. Therefore, we could get this figure to be fully articulationable. There's that word again that I think I made up. But um, it poses fine like you can get her in just about any pose that you want unless it's not something with her squatting down or sitting down other than that if it's dynamic if it's her standing in any form or fashion you will be able to get her in this pose she looks great other than that design choice for the sash i love every single other aspect of this figure which is exactly why it comes in second place for me now, I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me on this one, but coming in at number one as the least problematic action figure in the revived One Piece line is none other than the SH Figure Arts Kaido Man Beast form. And before you start typing up your comments, just listen real quick. First off, this figure came out exactly as I was expecting it to, but... There are some issues I was expecting it to have. I was 100% sure this figure was going to fall apart. It wasn't going to be able to hold a pose. 
I was thinking that this guy was going to have all sorts of issues. And when I got this guy in hand, pulled him out of the package and started reviewing it, I realized that literally none of the issues I imagined this figure was going to have exist. Like this guy poses wonderfully. And I know some people have said, it doesn't pose that great. You should just buy a statue. They should have just made it a statue. Like, first of all, have you really paid attention to this figure whenever you're handling it? The proportions on this guy are all over over the place for one, meaning that it's going to look a little bit different than handling your average 112 scale action figure. And if you haven't noticed, this guy is definitely not 112 scale. I mean, he is, but he isn't if you compare him to Sanji. So come on now. But this figure just looks so good, no matter how you get him posed up. And for the people saying that he's not able to get into all of those dynamic poses, I mean, for the most part, there's going to be some restrictions. But again, look at his design. That's to be expected. This guy has no reason. I mean, it'd be cool, but there's just absolutely no reason that you should have expectations for this guy to pose like a, a spider-man figure like come on my guy think about that it just doesn't make sense but literally the only issue i have with this guy is that they didn't paint all the scales now i mentioned that in my review that um i thought it looked good but i only said that because i thought that it was ichiro oda's design i didn't know that all the scales on kaido were supposed to be painted in this blue color right here so i wish they would have brought that on down and finished up in the legs and tail and all of that good stuff so i have to knock points off for that but that's literally just a paint issue i like uh, it's just a paint issue which sucks don't get me wrong but I can't count off anything else on this figure for a paint issue. I mean, again, it poses great. He comes with a decent amount of accessories. He looks good. Everything on this guy is done exceptionally well when it comes to the sculpt and detail. So overall, all, I can't even speak right now. All around, he's a solid figure. I know he's the most expensive. This is one you really have to experience in order to understand what I mean when I say that this is a great figure. So all in all, here's my breakdown of the current One Piece line and the status quo so far. To be honest, I pointed out a whole lot of issues in this video, most of them being around the same topic, but I do still enjoy these figures. Now, I do wish Tamashi Nations would give this line that extra bit of effort to make these figures as good as they at least could be, but I mean, who knows? This information will probably never reach them because from what I'm seeing, these figures are still constantly selling out which I would think would give them that extra push to make the figures better. But sad to say, that doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Now, again, I do enjoy these figures greatly, but I do wish that this line could be as good as the Dragon Ball line or the Naruto line, which hasn't had a miss since it was revived. The JJK line, which was getting so much better nearing the end, if it is the end of that line. And then the Bleach line, which in my opinion, has those figures don't have any QC issues. In my opinion, they could be better in terms of delivery, but I don't think that they have any QC issues. And so that's how I feel about this One Piece line. I just wish it could be as great as Tamashi Nation's other lines. Hopefully they'll get with the program, but I mean, who knows? I just hate to see these figures having QC issues that don't exist in other figures that have been designed almost the exact same it's kind of like with a lot of these figures they take a step back instead of taking a step forward and trying something new but making it work they just use old designs but they're composed horribly but anyway i mean it is what it is i'm truly looking forward to seeing what this line has next to offer uh Gear 5, I believe, is the next release in this line. I am fully expecting that figure to come with a ton of problems, but I love Gear 5. That is one of my top... Uh, in fact, that's probably, in my opinion, the best modern-day shonen anime character transformation or main protagonist transformation. I really love Gear 5, and especially after his recent transformation in his fight with...
So, um, yeah, man, just truly looking forward to this line and seeing what comes next. Overall, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That always helps me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new content. And last but not least, follow me on everything you see listed in the description below to keep all of my activity outside of YouTube. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe wherever you are and uh, bye.